What's going on, everybody? It is March 16th, Stone Cold Day, uh, and it's Friday. Six games, um, not really the best slate. Uh, each game is kind of a mess in and of itself. Thunder Clippers is really the only thing that I have any major interest in, although Lakers Heat will be interesting from a fantasy perspective. Um, ended up not playing last night, just... Spent some time with the wife on uh, belated birthday day, so I'm ready to go tonight. Uh, we'll be going live tonight starting at 6, um, so come join in on the fun, YouTube and Twitch. Uh, and it should be a fun stream, so let's just get into this now. First game up, uh, Magic hosting the Celtics. There's not a line out on this game right now, but I've got it Celtics by 5 in Orlando. Uh, Magic would have a 102 implied total, which would be 10th. Uh, not a ton to like here. Uh, I'm assuming that Aaron Gordon is back, playing as a slightly limited minutes um, for tonight, which would make him uh, very much not playable. Jonathan Simmons uh, is very much not playable. Um, 7000 on Fanduel is an absolutely ludicrous salary for him. Uh, I have absolutely no interest. Um... DJ Augustin on DK is fine. 5,200 is not so bad. Uh, he's been getting, you know, got 36 minutes in the last one. Uh, put up 44 fantasy points. I don't really have much in, or much problem going with him here, especially if Boston is going to be, uh, you know, running eight guys deep. Uh, Vooch, I think, is in a pretty interesting spot. Um, I think Horford is back for Boston, so... It's not as desirable as it would have been, uh, but he should be able to get, you know, some minutes against guys that probably can't hang with him um, defensively. So I'd be cool with Vooch. Normally I would be a little wary of of grabbing Boston, but with them having so many injuries, I think it opens up a little bit more options. Uh, Jonathan Isaac, I probably don't have any interest in if Gordon comes back. Um, I probably don't have much interest either way, but for 3600 on DK, it's an okay punt option. Mostly, I would be looking at Vooch if I was looking at anything here, but I don't have a terribly large amount of interest on Orlando. So we'll go to Boston. Uh, I would have the Celtics as a five-point favorite in Orlando. That would be the sixth highest implied total. Um, obviously, Boston's going to have, you know, a great set of matchups, starting with Marcus Morris, uh, B-plus for me on FanDuel, A on DK, 5,900. Uh, he played an astronomical amount of minutes. What did he play? 44. Um, you know, I know that they went to uh, double OT, but he's going to get a ton of run. Um, at that price, you should absolutely be running him out there. Uh, I think he's about as safe as it gets, um, you know, just going up against Orlando, whether Gordon's in or not. Um, he's just going to perform. Uh, it, I see very little. Uh, he's got a pretty high floor for me. Uh, Rogier, I probably need to give a little bit of a boost to. Um, my numbers don't give him quite enough credit when all these guys end up being out, but he's 8,200 on FanDuel right now. That's that's like Drew Holiday prices. Uh, so it's hard for me to go too crazy. The only takeaway from that is that um, Boston's got the second best point guard matchup and the third best shooting guard matchup. So at the very least, I think I need to give uh, Terry Rozier a little bit of a boost just because I think that my numbers are... Oh, that's not a percentage. I was like, holy shit, he's an A now. Uh, I think my numbers underrate him just a little bit. That seems reasonable to me. He still is a ridiculous... That's a ridiculous price for him. Um, and he needed every bit of those 48 minutes in OT to get to that 53, so... Um, Jason Tatum, I think, looks great. I mean, a lot of these guys do, particularly on DK... Um, there's just so many minutes to go around. So Morris, Rozier, Tatum, Horford, Baines, I think that's all fine on DraftKings. Um, I don't have a ton of interest in Baines at 4,500 on FanDuel, but 
Uh, Morris, Rogier, Tatum, and Horford, you should have a good bit of them. Horford in particular at 7,200 on FanDuel. Uh, as long as we don't hear anything crazy, um, he should be facilitating a lot uh, and could be in line for a pretty pretty nice game. No one's scared of Boston defensively, so or uh, no one's scared of Orlando defensively. All the games are going to be like this. Next one up is Philly and Brooklyn. You know, it's just, it's a team that's good against a team that's tanking. And it makes for a tricky recipe of figuring out which game is actually going to be close. Uh, Sixers, 113.5 implied total. They are 8.5 point favorites at home against Brooklyn. Um, they are on the back-to-back. Um, I'm... I'm assuming Embiid plays just because it's a home game, uh, but it wouldn't shock me if he didn't. Uh, either way, I think he looks really good tonight, particularly on DraftKings, 9,500. Uh, coming off a of back-to-back 50-point games, if we know that he's going to be on the floor against a Brooklyn team that has been the worst team against centers in the league, um, I would want to have a, a decent amount of, of Joel and Embiid. They played recently, if I remember correctly. He went for 39. 9 of 17 from the field. And they beat him by 23, which is kind of scary. Um, yeah, uh, look, I am I have interest in Embiid, particularly on DK, but either way. Um, I think Ben Simmons looks like a solid spot here. Uh, 9400 on FanDuel, 8800 on DK. Again, these DK prices are looking a lot better. Between Simmons, Embiid, Saric, uh, all three of those guys look a lot better on DraftKings than they do on FanDuel tonight. Uh, Covington, again, putting up 30. Really coming on. Um, I feel like I'm underrating him there. Probably not. Uh, he was just so bad earlier in the season, but man, is he on a heater. You know, but for me, my focus would be Embiid. Um, I don't have as much interest in like Redick or Bellinelli. I would prioritize my guys as Embiid, Simmons, and Covington. Um, I don't have a ton of interest in Saric. He's not somebody I would probably have at, uh, on FanDuel. Not the best GPP play. At 6,900, there's it's hard for him to get much higher. I'd be fine with him in cash. Um, I'd be a little bit more amenable to him on DraftKings, though. Um, yeah, I mean, Philly looks great. Uh, you want to hope that they don't blow them out too bad and that you can guarantee, you know, Embiid gets 30 minutes. Now, if Embiid is out, you're going to definitely want some sort of combo of Ilya Sova, Rashawn Holmes, um... There'll be plenty of minutes in that front court to, to eat up Brooklyn's. So now we'll go to Brooklyn. Hard team to figure out right now. Um, they are eight and a half point underdogs in Philly. Oh, Philly, by the way, number one implied total. Brooklyn right now, seventh. Um, again, not a ton here. Obviously, Philly, uh, exceptional defensively. Uh, Real tough matchup, toughest small forward and power forward matchup for the night. Second toughest point guard and center matchups tonight. So, for me, um, D'Angelo Russell, move that mouse, uh, 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. I think that's probably a pretty good spot. Um, I wish I could change this thing with my mind. Maybe, maybe that'll be in the next Excel. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine running at D'Angelo Russell coming off the 45 point game uh, a couple nights ago where he was super hot in the first quarter uh, 33.8 fantasy points in the game before that which would be right around value um, I just think he's going to be going for it you know he seems to be playing a little bit better lately had the 40 point game a couple nights ago as well uh, so I think that grade is fitting you know he's in the middle tier uh somebody I'd be fine with using on a six-game slate. Levert looks great on DraftKings. 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,000 on DK. Uh, I'd be all about using Karis Levert here. Um, 
six thousand's a little tricky, but you know he went for thirty two in his last game, had a thirty nine a couple games before that. Uh, that all looks really good at a five thousand dollar price point. For for me though, this is too tough of a matchup to try to force anything. You've got guys like Dinwiddie, Hollis Jefferson, even Jared Allen if he's going to play. Um, where there are okay-ish plays, but I don't necessarily trust them to do enough. Uh, I guess Hollis Jefferson would probably be the only guy that I would explore. But even that makes me a little nervous just because of how good they've defended small forwards or power forwards, whatever you want to call them. Uh, D'Angelo Russell having some overlap to that shooting guard position is really the only reason I have any interest there. I don't think it works as a as good of a matchup for uh, Crab on FanDuel. So I think D'Angelo Russell is probably the only guy that I'd be looking at here. <laughs> Sorry for the sniffle. Let me get a good one in. All righty. Now, Toronto hosting the Dallas Mavericks. 11-point uh, favorites at home, third highest implied total. Again, this is another, in a way, uh, team that's good against a team that's tanking. Although, you know, wink, wink, Dallas isn't really tanking. Um, let's think about this here. So, Toronto, DeRozan, 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DK. So they jumped his salary back up. Yep. Back up another five hundred dollars. Interesting. Um, I think this is probably a better matchup for Kyle Lowry. Seventy-seven hundred on Fanduel, seventy-eight hundred on DK. Uh, Dallas has been equal to point guards and shooting guards, so no real difference there, but. Dallas does give up more threes, which would fit Kyle Lowry. Dallas really good at keeping people off the line, which would be a, you know, that flies in the face of DeRozan, who, who gets to the line at a really good clip. So, you know, that could break in a weird way. I'd prefer Lowry to DeRozan here. Uh, not by much. I don't think either of them stand out as anything super special. Uh, the one thing that I would be interested in from Toronto would be Serge Ibaka. Uh, a buck is 5,300 on both sites, but you know, increased minutes from time to time. But 5,300 is an easy bar to cross, I think. Uh, power forward is they have the second best matchup there tonight. Um, five big games, only two duds and two monsters. So I feel pretty comfortable having a decent amount of a Baca. And at that price point, it's a little bit of a value, uh, it lets you fit in some, some bigger guys elsewhere uh, he would be my focus uh, from Toronto as a, sort of a value play other than that you know I'm fine having a small amount of Van Vliet in lineups uh, a little bit of Jonas I think would be okay but I would go Abaka, Lowry, DeRozan and then you know the rest of the guys as filler for the Mavs uh, 100.5 implied total is 12th, which is also dead last. This one's going to be a tricky one for finding anything that looks even remotely close to decent. Um, it's a tricky matchup. Worst matchup for shooting guards. Uh, you know, below average at small forward and power forward. The only real chance is at center, which is not necessarily their uh, calling card. Toronto is just good on D. I, I'm not expecting much coming out of Dallas here. Uh, if you want to go to Dennis Smith at 6,700, I can see it. Uh, upside is, what, in like the low 40s? I think there are better options out there. Uh, but at that price, he's acceptable. But really, I mean, you can see the grades there. For FanDuel... Um, you know, nothing really looking good. They've been spreading out most of their minutes, and when you're giving when you're giving 30 to guys like Yogi Ferrell or McBuckets, all these low usage guys, you're betting on a very specific outcome that's sort of tough to predict. So, outside of Harrison Barnes, who I don't necessarily think has the best matchup tonight, um, 
I'd be okay having a little bit of Barnes just because of you know his place in the offense. But really, I mean, you're looking for he's he's going to put you in the mid 30s if you're lucky, which is right at value. So not a ton to like from a GPP perspective on Dallas, in my opinion. Uh, it's just just a bad spot. It's a lot more to like in the later games. Uh, OKC hosting the Clippers. Uh, the Thunder are eight-point favorites at home. This is a made-up line. Uh, we don't know about officially about Paul George or Stephen Adams. Um, the Clippers are the Clippers. But I would have the Thunder eight-point favorites, 111 implied total, which would be fourth. Um, if Paul George does play, I have a lot of interest there, uh, especially on DK. Uh, 8,500 on FanDuel, 8,100 on DraftKings. I think it would be a, a good spot for George. Um, he hasn't had like a really monster game in a while. This strikes me as the type of game that that could come out. Uh, every matchup that they have is relatively favorable except for small forward. The other four are all above average. Um, Russ at 12-1, 11-6 on DK. This should be an, an exceptional spot for him because it's not like Taya Dosich is going to do anything. They don't have... Their two best defenders that would go on to Russ would be Patrick Beverly or Avery Bradley, both of which are not suiting up tonight. So uh, Russ is... I haven't seen Durant's price yet, but even just taking into account how popular Durant will probably be, um, I think Russ is my favorite stud of the night, and I'm probably going to have a lot of him. I see no reason why he doesn't have 60-plus fantasy points. It just uh, seems like a really, really safe game for him. Um, I'd be interested in Steven Adams. Uh, you got to make sure he's on the court. We might not have that news by lock. Um, but if we do, uh, I think it's a good spot. Nothing too much to worry about. Uh, I, I don't have a ton of fear of DeAndre Jordan. So 7300 is a bit of a, a lofty price tag, but he can get himself up into the 40s, and that's what you would be looking for. Uh, and Melo, uh, congrats for having back-to-back 30-point games. Uh, I don't think that I want to follow you down that path anymore. I have a sneaky suspicion that three straight is going to be a little difficult, but... You know, coming to L.A., is that game on national TV? Nope, it's on NBA TV. So, yeah, if it were on national TV, I might give some credence to Melo actually giving a shit, but it's not going to be tonight. I'm going to focus most of my energy on Russ. <laughs> now, for the Clippers... Uh, 103 implied total would be ninth. Uh, point guard, small forward, and center, all really negative matchups for them. Power forward, not much better, but uh, they do have the number one shooting guard matchup. So something to keep in mind there for our boy Lou Will, who is grading out amazing. Uh, Tobias Harris, 7,700 and 7,300. Yeah, I don't like. I don't have much of an issue there. Um, you just never know which Tobias Harris you're going to get. I'm, I usually get him on those 28-point nights and not on those 44 to 54-type nights. Um, I'll have him. I'll probably be, you know, relatively neutral weight for him. Uh, I don't feel comfortable with him in cash. I would, I would rather have him in a GPP. But... You know, most of those, 34 was the low in the past two weeks. I'm probably being a little dramatic there. He's probably safe in either format. Uh, Rivers, I'm good. Uh, not a lot of upside at that price. You need 38 to hit 6x or something along those lines. 36, 37 and change. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to have a hard time uh, getting to anything I want if I have Rivers. Lou Will, though, going to be in a bundle lineup. 7,200. Um, hasn't been going crazy lately, but I think this is the best spot for him. Uh, a- minus on both sites. He'll be one of my highest-owned guys just because of price and how much I like him. 
DeAndre, I'm a little less enthused about. Uh, I do want to knock him down a little bit just because of the matchup. Although I will remove that um, if Adams ends up not playing. But I wouldn't go crazy about DeAndre there. Uh, he could, it could go well. Dude's been playing well. Got a 65, a 51, and a 54 in the past uh, two weeks. So that upside has been there. He's been playing a lot better, but uh, expecting that to happen against Steven Adams is a lot different than expecting that to happen against whatever dummies he was playing and dropping that on. Who was it? Um, Chicago... Cleveland and the Knicks. Not exactly a murderer's row of center defense. So, uh, approach DeAndre with Cade Gloves. Um, if you want to get really funky in a GPP, Sindarius Thornwell's been playing like 30 minutes a game in the past two. So, uh, if you want to bet on minutes and hope that he can get a hot hand or something, but this dude has 12% usage projected. Uh, it's pretty hard to fill out a, a fantasy stat sheet at that number. So my focus is dramatically on Lou Will. I'll have a, a you know an average amount of Tobias Harris, and I'm going to try to be underweight significantly on DeAndre. And then uh, Tay Dosich at 4,000. If you get him on one of those nights where he gets 31 minutes, it sounds great. If you get him on a night where he has 20, it sounds a lot less great. Um... This doesn't seem like the type of matchup that he's going to be in on the floor for because Russ should just abuse him. I mean, Tatos is just one of the worst point guard defenders in the league. So, uh, if he, I, I hope he's on the floor from the perspective of a Russ owner, but it's going to be a tough one for him. Let's go to Golden State. Uh, Durant actually questionable. Um, so it's possible that the you know he could be out, but right now it's just going to be a Durant and Draymond show, based on what we know. Uh, Warriors I have as twelve point favorites in Sacramento, number two implied total. Obviously the matchup's incredible, uh, but for right now it's basically just ooh Durant up to eleven four. There it is. So yeah, I would much prefer Russ. Um, I w probably wouldn't go very crazy on Durant. Sacramento is just so bad that uh, the chance of this game being one close and two Durant needing to play like an overwhelming amount of minutes seems pretty low to me. Um, I'd be fine with Draymond at 7,800 on uh, FanDuel, 8,600 on DK is just way too high. Um, th those guys are both fine. Um, I'm not as enthusiastic about it just because it's the it's a, it's a very unimportant game to them and they are not going to grind Durant and Draymond into the ground just to make sure they pick up a win a win in Sacramento they're going to assume that they can do that regardless uh so I would love to look deeper at like Zaza or you know Nick Young's probably too expensive at this point you know if we find out Durant's out then Caspi will look great but all you can do is just hope that one of those guys on Golden State is like a GPP flyer. I don't really have much opinion on Cook or Nick Young or Iguodala or Livingston. Zaza is the only guy that I would feel like relatively comfortable with. Um, but the rest of those guys, it's all just a GPP guess in my opinion. I'm going to try my best to be underweight on Durant depending on how salaries build out. Uh, I'd, I'd much rather have more Draymond than, than Durant tonight. Now for Sacramento, um, 12 point underdogs in Golden State. They're a dumpster fire. Um, I'd be fine with Willie Cauley Stein, actually. Uh, 6,800 on FanDuel, um, 6,800 on, or 6,200 on DK. I think that's fine. Um, you're looking for, you know, 34-ish. I think he can get you there. Opportunity is going to be there to, to do a little bit more as well. Um, other than that, you know, Fox isn't exactly very appealing in this situation. Um, feel free to flip a coin on Bogdan or Buddy Heald. Right now, 
Bogdan has the lower salary, so I feel like he would win. But even I'm a Scal fan, but I think you can only play him on DK. 5,700 on, on FanDuel is, is ludicrous. Uh, look, this seems bad, and there's no rhyme or reason who plays well or who goes off. You know, Buddy Heald at 44 in the last game, 10 the game before that. It's just it's so hard to, to try to figure out these tanking teams. So stick to the guys that should play regardless. Um, so for me, I'll have some Willie Cauley-Stein. I'll have a very small assorted amount of Bogdan or Buddy Heald, but that's it for me. I don't like trying to force it on these bad teams. Then finally, the Lakers. Uh, I have them as four-point favorites in Miami. A 108 implied total would be fifth. Um, and I like a lot of this on FanDuel. So KCP, Lonzo, Julius Randle, Kuzma if he plays, which we might not know, so you probably need to avoid him. But Isaiah Thomas, KCP, Lonzo, Randle, and Thomas all have a bundle of, particularly Rando, yeah, Rando, Randle <laughs> and Lonzo. Um, I would rank them Randle, Lonzo, KCP, Isaiah. That'll be my focus. Um, Heat are going to be missing Wade, most likely Josh Richardson, and uh, and Whiteside. Sorry, guys. One second. I need to go blow the old nose. All right, let's try this again. So, yeah, uh, Randall would be my main focus. 7,400 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. That's nuts. Uh, that's a very nuts price for him on FanDuel right now. For a guy that's gone. Here's his last. Here's every game in March, starting March 1st. 39 above value. 41 above value. 37 right at value. 27 under value. 30 under value. 68. Words don't need to describe that one. 40 over value. 35 just slightly under. I'm in for it for sure. He's going to slam himself into Kelly Olynyk and have no problems there. Um, or Bam out of bio. He's just going to go right at him. Bam's basically just Julius Randle four years ago. Uh, so, yeah, Randle is my major priority on FanDuel. Uh, Lonzo would be my second best spot. You know, no Josh Richardson on the perimeter should make their defense a little worse. Um, so, I'd, I'd be very interested there. I just want to have a bunch of it. Those prices are great on FanDuel. Um, they're all relatively neutral on DK, which is kind of crazy. Uh, I don't know how I would break those ties. And barring any news from Kuzma in that in that run-up, I'm going to avoid him uh, in my lines for the night. That probably, you know, taking that stance, I'd probably want to have a little bit of, I don't know, Travis Ware. Also... I want to bring this up now, not that it totally matters. It's not like anybody's going to be super focused on Alex Caruso. I'm almost positive that his 45 days of his two-way contract ran out yesterday, and he's not available tonight. So keep an eye on that. Uh, I don't think that I saw that anywhere on, like, Roto World. But I'm almost positive that I either read or heard that yesterday, uh, that he does not have availability tonight, barring a new contract. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be the Julius Randle show for L.A. Finally, we go to Miami. Uh, Miami, four-point underdogs in uh, in L.A. No Wade, no Whiteside, no Josh Richardson. Um, going to be steady diet of these same guys that were playing uh, two nights ago. Uh, Justice Winslow at 5,600 is fine. Um, I like him for the position, but I'm not a big fan of that price. Uh, the guys that I want to go after for sure would be James Johnson, uh, 4,700 on FanDuel. He's going to need to play 25-plus minutes. Um, this is a dude that should smash, not smash value, but has the ability to smash value. He's still pretty risky, um, but I, I like him a lot tonight. I like Bam a lot tonight, at least on FanDuel. Tyler Johnson is going to be in an overwhelming amount of my lineups at $5,000. Uh, a lot of these Heat guys are uh, not appropriately priced outside of James Johnson on DK, and even he's not priced well. Uh, but 
for Miami on FanDuel, I'll have a decent amount of Winslow, Dragic, Tyler Johnson, James Johnson, Kelly Olynyk to an extent, a bunch of Bam. Um, the Heat are going to be a place I'm going to be looking, especially because this should be a, a relatively high-paced game for them in comparison. Um, Lakers not exactly great on D, so lots to like there. I know I flew through this a little bit. Uh, still feeling a little under the weather, and I can tell that my voice doesn't sound as uh, just generally appealing as it normally does. So still trying to work our way back, but live stream for sure tonight. It's been too long. I'm chomping at the bit to do it. So let's dump these in here, and uh, we'll take a look at what gets spit out. Bump up randomness. Yeah, ton of James Johnson, ton of Lou Will, Durant, Paul George, Randall. So I would want to grab James Johnson and Lou Will right off the bat. Um, let's see how the rest of that fills out. I'm I'm gonna try to avoid Durant there. So let's say Paul George. No, he's potentially injured, which makes me want to then grab Russ, which kind of makes me want to not have Paul George then, but it's neither here nor there. Uh, yeah, let's back off of Paul George there then. We'll see what happens. Um, let's grab Tyler Johnson. Ooh, yeah, I could, I could get talked into that one. Um... You know, not the biggest Sezonia fan in the world. I don't think Redick is necessarily in the best spot, so I'd be willing to uh, mix and match a little bit there. But I like the guts of this lineup, at least. Let's see what happens if I get, like, 20 more and just swap out shooting guards and small forwards, see what else pops up. Uh, wait, no, no, no. Yeah, that might require me to drop out on, I don't know, somebody here and take a step down. You know, maybe drop from Embiid to Horford to see uh, who else is out there. Or go all the way down to Zaza and really bump up the rest of these guys. There are options there. I think there's gonna, it's going to be a fun night. Perfect size slate. I'll go to DK. With the right amount of news, it could be a pretty wild night. And I don't know how much we're going to get with the start times that are laid out like they are. Ooh, I am tired. Alrighty, randomness up. And we'll go. This one should be so much different. The prices were dramatically different. So much Sendarius Thornwell on DK because of his price. So much Marcus Morris. I get that. So let's grab James Johnson. Let's grab Marcus Morris. Uh, we're going to want to find Lou Will. I think Willie Colley Stein could be interesting. That trims me to three. Um, I'd be, I'd be, I would entertain that in a GPP, but I wouldn't love it. I like this a little bit more. I'd love to massage Isaac and Van Vliet into something else, but I don't know how feasible that is. If I grabbed, let's leave Embiid out of it and grab all of those guys and see what happens if I do twenty more. Um, yeah, it's just an overwhelming amount of the same kind of guys crumbled together. I would want to. I would want to focus in a different direction here. Um, having trouble filling that out as much as I would like. I'd be more inclined for something like this with Abaka, Ben Simmons, and Thornwell, but 
I'm going to have to neuter Thornwell a little bit. He's coming up a little hot. And that's all I got, guys. Um, it's good to be back doing three, you know, three in a row, trying slowly to feel a little bit better. Uh, like I said, we'll be live tonight starting at 6 on YouTube and Twitch. If you like this video, you know, like and subscribe. Very helpful. Um, follow me on Twitter. Check me out on Reddit. Uh, things are going well, guys. Uh, baseball season is coming soon. You'll be hearing more from me on that. Um, but for right now, I got to go. Good luck tonight.